Okay, welcome to the interface overview for vMix in our unofficial guide to vMix 2.0 online course. Let's take a look. So first of all, um, this is the interface right next to me, and it's split into multiple different areas that we should focus on. So first of all, we have the left and right main areas. And these areas are used for preview and output. So just starting from left to right here, we have the preview screen on this side and the output side on the right side. So to demonstrate this really quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm going to hit the add input button down in the bottom right. And I'm just gonna add a, a quick video. So we'll, we'll browse my computer quickly, grab a random video from the desktop. Here's one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show this video being transitioned to. So when it's in the left-hand side, we can watch the video. Maybe it's a live, maybe it's a live video, maybe it's a camera, maybe it's an image, doesn't matter. But what we can do is we can go right to the center area here and click one of the transitions to either fade or merge it back and forth between preview and output. So in the center here, this is called the transitions bar. And so the transitions bar, you can set these up to be many different types of transitions, such as like a vertical wipe. You can change these to fit your project. You not only can you change the type, but you can also change the duration of the setup. So if you would like for your the duration of your um, transition to be two or three seconds, you can do so used by changing the duration. So two seconds would be 2000 milliseconds. So when I hit cube, it's kind of a nice and slow section there just to kind of give you an idea. So that's the transitions bar in between the preview and output. So to show that just a little bit better, let's add one more video here. And now we'll show kind of transitioning between left and right. So these videos currently are you know, starting and stopping as they're being transitioned. And we'll learn how all of that gets set up in a moment. But right now we're just kind of focusing on the interface here. At the very top, we have the preset buttons in vMix. So that's all the way at the top left there. We have the ability to have a new preset, open a saved preset. We can save this preset. Let's just go ahead and save this preset as an example. And when we do that, we're able to open the preset back up and that is essentially the collection of all of the inputs and setups that you have inside of vMix. So we can go, we can set up one show, then set up another show, and we can quickly load all of the assets into vMix using these save buttons here. We can also hit the undo button, which will undo the last thing that we've done. So it looks like I had a desktop capture set up here, and it just re-added it because I closed it. I was like, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to close that. You can hit the undo button to bring something back. So that's handy if you just recently did something that you want to bring back, for example. Okay, so we've looked at kind of the saving of the presets, the transition bar, and the inputs and outputs here. Now, it's worth noting that there's different views inside of the inputs and outputs. Now this is gonna get a little bit more advanced and uh, I don't wanna to get too crazy, but you can look at a waveform monitor view, for example, of the video that you're looking at to quickly take a look at the colors. You can take a look at the vector scope with a preview. And those are all the different viewing options. You can even look at a waveform monitor and a view a uh, waveform monitor and a vector scope at the same time with a preview. 
that may not be necessary for most folks. But you can also look at it in a grid. So what this does is if you know for a fact that you're maybe live streaming in a mobile format, or maybe you're live streaming in a square format, it'll give you an idea of the grid line. So something to take a peek at. And then the um, cog there will automatically open up the input that is inside of vMix. So think about that as well. Uh, we'll take a quick look at inputs in a moment here, but that cog, whenever you see that cog there, that means that you can open up the input and unveil all of the different settings that are available. Okay, so we have basic mode here, which really just gets rid of the overlays and the different buttons here. I should mention that below the transitions here are overlay buttons. So when you overlay something, and let's just create, let's just pull a title in quickly. And we'll just pull in this title. And wait for it to load up there. And when I hit the number one button, it will show the title on channel one. And you can see here that the little one channel came up there. So it turned color. So that is how you know what channels of overlay are being, are being used. So you can choose a channel. Let's put one more title in here just to get another example. We hit the add input button to get a title and we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail later. But you can see here, for example, and I'm just going to change the position of this title so we can see them both at the same time. I'm going to put this title on channel two and this title on channel one. So those are your channels and they're inside of the, they're right below that transition bar there, just as a quick reference. And they're also available below each input. So you can choose what input you may want to quickly overlay on a various channel. Now in right here as well, there's a T bar. And what that does is it slowly transitions depending on the transition that you have set up. So that was the cube zoom. But if we do a fade, it would slowly transition from the fade. So that is called a T-bar, and it's something that you can use to make nice artistic effects. Now, the settings button over here in the top right, when that is clicked, it opens up the entire settings for vMix. Now, vMix has a lot of different settings, and it's something that you may be interested in learning about. And we're going to have a another video all about the settings. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but for example, you can change the theme color, the frame rate, what your full screen button does that we should look at in a moment here, and lots of different options. We're not going to go into all these just yet. Just want to familiarize you with the interface. Now this full screen button up here actually takes your output and projects it full screen, maybe to a projector, maybe to a um, another area. Let me make sure I show that. Sorry about that. Let me merge out. So this full screen button there, that can be clicked to output almost any input inside of vMix. So if you click the button down there, you can show a full multi-view. Um, you can, and if we click that button, just to show you an example of that, we'll go into the multi-view in more detail. But now you can see that it's taking, giving us a preview output and a full screen look at, you know, up to, you know, four to eight inputs um, plus your preview and output. So that's an interesting way to look at all of your, your inputs inside of vMix. So that's the full screen. These are the transition buttons. You got your preview, your output, all of your inputs down here. It's worth noting that you can organize inputs into categories. So let's say we wanted to have one for our titles, one for our videos, and one for our cameras. I was able to open that up by right-clicking these little tabs up here. Now, how do we put things in these tabs? So there's the video tab. There's nothing in it. This is the main tab here. And then we'll create another one for titles. 
But we don't have any cameras yet. We'll talk about cameras in an upcoming video, but let's just organize our videos. So our videos are going to be put into this tab here so we can just double click it or click the cog to open up the input settings area. We can rename it, which is something that's important to do. You know, we'll just call it video one for now. But when we click that, we are able to, you know, put it into the right category. Now we'll go to our next video here, and that's just a random video file. So we'll call this school just to give it a nice new name and put it in the right category. We'll go over all of these input settings in a moment here in the next video. But just to show you, we've now organized some of our things here. Let's take our other two titles quickly and put them into our titles folder by double clicking. Or again, we can hit the cog and put them into that color, which will make them show up in this. So if you have a lot of inputs, you can make them a lot easier to access by putting them into these little folders. Now the audio mixer can be found in the bottom right hand side. So that is a area of interest that you should be thinking about using. You can see that it turned, you know, kind of got started when I clicked it there and opened it up. But you can also hit this pin button there to unpin it and bring it anywhere you'd like. So the audio mixer is very flexible. You can move this around and use it in a lot of different ways. Each input that is uh, in vMix automatically is shown in this audio mixer. We will show the audio mixer uh, in more detail later, but when you hit the cog, you get all the audio settings for each channel, and you can decide whether you want to see that in the mixer or not, because maybe you don't need it in the mixer. Uh, that's totally up to you because you might not want every single input in your audio mixer, uh, but it's a very simple interface for mixing the volumes of your audio. There's some options here we'll go into more in the audio section of our tutorial. I just want to familiarize everybody with the vMix interface. Now, the final portion of the interface that we really should look at is the buttons at the bottom. So we've already used this Add Input button, which basically opens up all the inputs that we'll look at in an upcoming video. Then we've got the record section here and all of these buttons, essentially you can, the next buttons here, record, external, stream, multi-quarter playlist. I'm going to open them by clicking the cog button because if I click the record button, it will actually start a recording. But instead, what I'd like to do is I would like to actually hit the cog button to opt open up the options that I can set up before I get into actually recording. Now we'll talk more about recording in an upcoming video, but this is where you can choose where the video recording goes and all of the settings for that video. Now the external button is a little bit different. This one allows you to determine what you want to use for your external outputs. And a very popular use case for this when it's turned on is to output video directly to a virtual webcam that can be used with Zoom, Skype, or GoToMeeting, for example. External programs that use a webcam. Now, another popular one is the streaming tab here. As you can see, you can stream to three separate destinations and you can decide to log into YouTube or Facebook and many of the other options. Choose your URL and stream key and then the quality presets or go in even deeper and set up the actual quality settings that you would like to save for your custom project. So again, we'll go into streaming in more detail in an upcoming video. Um, the multi-quarter, which is only available in some of the higher levels of vMix, the higher level additions, this allows you to record multiple inputs at the same time. So you can configure your outputs or any of your cameras and record a clean feed of your videos without all of the animations and overlay channels. So that's really good for post-production. And then finally, we have a playlist feature here, which allows you to essentially create an automated playlist. So let's say, for example, I've got two videos that I want to be playing all the time, and I want them to go back and forth and loop together. 
I can double click these and we'll look at the playlist feature in more detail again in an upcoming video, but I can choose like durations and, and transitions here. When I start that, it's literally just going to loop between those two videos with the settings that I have set up here. So I will stop that, but just to give you an idea of the interface. Now, going to the bottom right hand side of the interface, there's a couple extra buttons that we should all be aware of, including the controls for overlays and data sources, shortcuts, and a few more. So let's take a peek at those. So you can see here that we have this overlay button. And when we get to the overlay button, that will allow us to edit exactly what all of the overlays do. So overlays, those overlay channels that we were looking at, one, two, three, and four, can be set up to be used differently. And again, we'll look at overlay settings in more detail in an upcoming video, but just wanted you to be aware of that button. The next area is what's considered a hamburger menu. And this opens up a plethora of new options that you're going to learn about in this course, including data sources, which is a, a ability to bring in data directly into vMix from various sources. vMix Social, which allows you to integrate into social media like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter and bring comments directly into titles. Graphic Title Editor, which is the ability to edit titles and create your own custom titles. We'll have a video all about that. A, the Legacy Title Designer, which you will not necessarily need and we're not going to review because it's replaced by the GT title editor. vMix Video Tools, which is a tool to use to create custom stingers. We will look at that in an upcoming video. vMix Diagnostics and vMix NDI Config. And we'll talk all about those as well in upcoming videos. You can see your performance statistics quickly by clicking this button. You can edit the shortcuts, which is an important part of vMix, which we'll review in an upcoming video as well. You can take a quick snapshot of the output of your vMix into a folder with this button, and you can lock all of the buttons so that nobody can mess with your vMix setup by clicking this button. All right. Well, that does a pretty good overview of the vMix interface for us today. So that's a good detailed look at the vMix interface. I hope you guys like this pacing. I've been listening to the comments and I understand we want to go into detail, but we want to do it at a nice and slow pace where you guys can digest this information and become vMix experts before you know it. So let's get into our next video after this.